Novelists, short story writers, and poets all know instinctively how valuable storytelling is to both readers and writers. And I don't think it's absurd to say that civilization would not exist without storytelling. If we go back and look at ancient cultures, what uh, what what did they do? How did they pass on histories to other generations? Uh, they did it by verbally, right? By storytelling stories around a campfire or by having pictures and symbols written on walls. And this is what they shared with each other. Uh, and what, it, what are civilizations? What is culture without that shared history, those shared stories that they pass on from one generation to the next? So today I'm gonna talk about why stories storytelling is important and why you as a storyteller need to tell your story. You have a story to tell, but you don't know where to start. Let me show you how to free your story. I teach you how to write and how to dig deep in your soul to release your story and make a difference in the world. Welcome to the Julia Monte channel. If we're just meeting, I am Julia Monte. I'm a women's fiction author, and I am here to help you to tell your story. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is telling your story and why it's important for you to do so. So as we end the year, we end 2022, we're about to enter 2023, amazing. Uh, the, I wanna talk about storytelling. I wanna talk about why it's important. I wanna talk about why you should tell your story. If you did not uh, get to finish your, telling your story, writing your book, writing a novel, whatever it is that was your goal in 2022, that's okay. We're entering a new year and I want you, I want you to think about how important it is for you to share your story. So that's what we're going to discuss. Now let's talk about storytelling today. So in ancient times, of course, they, they told stories, um, they told histories, uh, but today, how do we use story and why, why is it still important? These days, where do you see stories? If you say everywhere, you're right. You see it in business, you see it in marketing, you see it, of course, in just novels and storytelling. And, and why is this true? Why are so many fields using story as something to connect with their audience? Well, that's because that is the easiest way to connect with our audience. It's the easiest way to persuade, it's the easiest way to educate, it's the easiest way to market. Uh, it's, through, it's, it's through a story. Storytelling touches our heart as well as our mind, and it's the easiest way to connect with people. It's almost impossible not to start listening to someone once they start telling us a story. Right? So immediately our mind connects. Our mind is hardwired for story. As soon as someone tells us to begins a story, our mind clicks on and we start to listen. We start to pay attention because we want to hear how this story develops. And as these people tell us a story, it becomes engraved in our mind and we don't forget it. We don't forget the facts. We don't forget the, the, the thing that they're trying to tell us. So it's very effective in business. It's very effective in marketing. And this is why it's used more and you see it more out in the real world. So let's talk a little bit more about why we like stories. What is it about stories that makes us like it? Well, stories call for us to use our imagination. We uh, hear the story and we start to imagine what the person is telling us, right? Especially if the person is a good storyteller. Uh, it's, it's very, it's highly symbolic. It can be and our mind attaches to that. It can represent more than just what the story is, right? So it's not just what the story is telling you, but it can mean a lot more than that. And it also, uh, it, it calls for the audience to participate. So as you are telling the story, the audience is participating as well because they're using their imagination to create the story in their own mind. So if you've ever taken an English class, for example, you're asked to, uh, interpret what the story is about. What, what did the author mean? What, did the, what was the author talking about? I always kind of found those classes a, a little odd. It's like, well, to me, I used to think, right, the story is just the story. There is no interpretation. It's whatever they're telling me, but it's not really true because each person, as they're reading the story, they're bringing their own history, their own background, their own uh, details into the story and they are interpreting it different. Each person has their own interpretation of a story. So this ability to participate in the storytelling, even if the reader is not, you know, the writer of course participates by writing, but even the reader is participating in bringing their own imagination to the story and we tend to like that, right? We can take away as much as readers as the writer does by writing this story. So the writer writes a story and gives you one interpretation that the reader may or may not pick up. It may mean something completely different to 
each reader that reads that story. And that is pretty interesting. It's really pretty cool as a writer that we can share a story that we wrote that means one thing to us, but it can mean very different things to each reader that reads it. Um, so we love stories because of that, because we get to use our own imagination, we get to bring our own interpretation to stories. So that's one reason. Another reason that stories are so attractive is that we get to learn so much from them. Um, I remember just being a little kid and reading uh, The Call of the Wild, and I learned so much from that. First of all, it was heartbreaking. So if you haven't read that story, it's about a wolf who becomes, uh, as a pup, part of a dog sled um, team out in, I think it was Alaska, or Klondike, I, I don't remember exactly where it was. But anyhow, he becomes this dog, and it's really told through the point of view of the dog, uh, and all the, the, just how harsh it is from. So as a kid, I was reading this, and it was heartbreaking. It's like, it was so sad. I didn't want to read this story about this dog. Um, but I had to for school or something. But I ended up, right, really learning a lot about different things, about struggle, about not giving up about uh, you know the kind of the harshness of life and so books a lot of times we read them because we do learn things from them we learn about ourselves we learn about what things we like things we don't like uh, about life itself so a lot of times we as readers we love books we love stories because we can take so many things away from it it's not just that our interpretation, which is one thing, and our using our imagination is just kind of fun to read, but it's also something where we get to learn about ourselves, we get to learn about life, we get to learn about how other people do things and evaluate whether that is something that we like, that we agree with, that we don't agree with. And that's a great thing, right? So whether it's books, whether it's movies, any kind of storytelling helps us to learn new things and evaluate how we feel about those things and how we feel about life. Okay, another reason that I think we like stories, and it might not even be something that's conscious, but it's that we become more empathetic. We can put ourselves into somebody else's shoes and see what it's like to be them. And it, it helps us to understand other people a little bit better, it helps us to understand them. So not only life, but it helps us to understand other people. Uh, I've read all kinds of things. I mean, I've read biographies where I didn't necessarily like the person, but I understood them a little bit better after reading the stories and, and that they went through and the, the experiences that they went through in their life. So it helps us to understand people better, to become more empathetic, and just become, I think, better people because we can understand what other people have gone through. Okay, something else that storytellers give to their readers is that escapism, right? So let's not talk about all the learning and all the other stuff. We read books because we like to kind of escape our own life, try, try something different, learn about something different, experience something different. And so but the readers do that, right? They get a book just for fun, just to read and escape whatever it is that they're going through and be uh, be able to have enjoy something different for a little while. And I think that's kind of natural as well. Uh, I think that children, right, when they are little, they try on different things. They pretend to be different things because why? They get to escape who they are and they get to pretend to be somebody else. Well, as adults, we kind of do the same thing. We, we read and we get to see what it's like to be this other person and experience other things. So just that escapism, that fun of trying different things, experiencing different things is another reason that we read and another reason why writers uh, are valuable because we, we, we're able to give this to the reader. So what am I saying here? The important thing, the valuable thing about stories and storytelling is that it changes us, right? It changes the reader. It allows them to use their imagination. It allows them to empathize with other people, to learn new things, and just to become a better person, to become a different person than they were when they started your story. Because of your story, they are able to change. So it's very powerful. And this is why uh, people in business, this is why politicians, this is why various other fields have taken story and used it to their benefit, right? Because it does, they, they understand that not only with the story, you're touching somebody's mind, you're also touching somebody's heart and that that is super valuable. And again, from the beginning of time, right? It is what creates civilization, what, what, um, maintain civilization are these stories these shared stories that people pass on from one generation to the next and 
we are part of it. You're part of it. So as a writer, uh, don't, you know, a lot of times it's kind of easy to say, well, we're not really doing anything. We're just writing. We're just telling a story. Well, you are, but it's super important. It's not something that we can, that people can live without. I really don't think they can. They can't live without stories. Uh, it's um, something that we crave as human beings is to be able to uh, listen, tell stories and hear stories and listen to stories. Um, it's enjoyable. It's something we all need in order to maintain our culture, our civilizations. And without it, I do think that we miss out on a lot. So as this year ends, uh, I encourage you to sit down, think about what story you want to tell in the new year and sit down, uh, write it down, outline it, and get ready to tell a story in 2023. Have a very happy new year and I will see you in 2023.